Yeah, and so this is kind of uh, how a lot of these tasks pop up, right? So every now and then we're gonna assign ourselves a follow-up task, but we often like to have the system do that uh, on our behalf. So the first thing we'll do is again, jump into settings up here in the top right, and then into workflow rules, which will either be here in the second row or up in the top right of this section, just depending on what edition you have. Uh, that one's yes. a squirrely one. It likes to move around a little bit on us. Yeah, it's painful um, if you've remembered this because your <laughs> mouse usually goes to one part of the screen and then it's moved yep. around on you. So, um, But then in workflow rules, I mean, the way to think about these before we jump into the actual nitty gritty is, is there an if then statement, right? So you tell the system, if a deal, you know, hits a certain stage, then create me this task, right? And obviously these can branch any which way. You can have these with tons of different criteria and uh, processes contained, but we'll go ahead and set up a simple one here around our deal flow. Um, so it's gonna ask you first to define, you know, which module this is gonna happen in. Now I wanna highlight, that doesn't mean that that's the only module that this workflow can involve. We're just deciding where it's gonna trigger. Right, so if we're going to say that you know workflow is going to fire off when the deal stage hits a certain stage, we would do that in the deal. But you know whatever we're going to do when that triggers could hit the contact, it could hit the account, right? So it doesn't have to all be contained in one module. We're just going to tell it where the action is going to take place that'll start the process. So in this case, we'll go ahead and create one for a deal, and we'll say that this is our proposal email that we're going to set up a task to send out. So. First, this first little section is starting off on our if statement, right? So if a record is created or edited, right? And you could do this if we hit a certain date or if the score reaches a certain value, if you're rolling out those. Nine times out of 10, we're doing things on a, a record action, right? Someone updating a field, someone checking a box, right? Maybe if the amount on a deal is over 100,000, right? Some of those different things that you want to notify or be aware of. And so you we'll say, really, if, you want to be really careful here because there's a repeat this workflow whenever the deal is edited. It's a dangerous button. It's a dangerous button. If you check that, so let's say it's if the deal hits this stage and you're like, and a lot of times people think, okay, I, I want to make sure that, you know, if the deal hits that stage, that this thing runs and they check this button. What that means is anytime anybody opens the record and like updates a phone number, it's going to fire off the workflow. Again, and, as long as it's still in that stage. It's <laughs> over and over and over again. So I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, you do not want to check that box. Yep. And then moving on, this is kind of the tail end of our if. So we're not quite in the then yet, but we're still in our if. So if the deal is created or edited such that the stage is now proposal or price quote, then we're going to have our action fire off. So this is kind of like our filter. It works just the same as those views, right? So you could have multiple in here. I could say if the stage hits proposal and the amount is above a certain amount. Um, you know, a use case for this that we see a lot is if a, if a you know, deal has particular needs, maybe a, a specific person has to make a, a proposal, right? Maybe they need an engineering proposal rather than just kind of a standard boilerplate, right? So you can kind of build some logic into this. And then we just define what our actions should be. Uh, so in this case, you know, we've got a couple different options. You can run a field update, which is basically saying that a certain field is gonna get a certain value, right? Nothing really dynamic. Um, that one we use a lot for date stamps. Like you might want to have a field in the deal that says like proposal date. And when you hit this stage, it auto fills that with the current date, right? That could be done with a field update. Yeah, another, um, another big one for field update that we see a lot is, you know, oftentimes people are marking their accounts and contacts as the contact type and account type is prospect. Mm -hmm. And you then have a deal associated with them and they then it's closed one. Well, they're not a prospect anymore. They're a client. So as soon as it's closed one, you're probably going to fire off a whole bunch of actions around that, mm -hmm. like invoice them and do this and that. But one of the things you want to do is update all of those contacts and <laughs> that account to, to client uh, when it comes to type. And uh, that really helps keep your data cleaned up. So any of these things yep. where you're moving field types, you're moving things, you're filtering based upon certain conditions, that field updates a big one. Yeah. And because it all kind of you know, you want to have the workflow a little off topic with the basics of the workflow, but you want to make sure that your workflows are generating useful data for you. So like when we're talking about custom views earlier and how you might want to have a, a custom view of all of your clients, well, in order for them to be in that view, that field has got to get updated. And so there's two ways to do that. Either I've got to go in and update it when I win a field and I have to, or when I win a deal, I've got to go to the contact, or we can just have the system do it for us with a couple little field updates. 
Um, you know, some various other things you can do here um, from your workflows. You can send out an email either internally or to the client. You can create a task, which we're going to show right now. Uh, you can actually create a related record or send a webhook. And then last but not least, you can actually run a custom function, uh, which you can just code into the system. So a little more advanced doing that, but we'll go ahead and show a task uh, to get started here. So when you pull this up, you know, it's going to come out with some base information. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and give it a subject. You know, we'll say a due date, which is going to be relative to when it was triggered. So in this case, it's going to be due the same day. Uh, we can set a priority. You can have it assigned to a particular user. If you don't assign it, it's going to go to whoever owns that deal, whoever owns that record where it was triggered. Um, and then, of course, you can choose if you want to be notified via email and add a little description to it. And so this would kind of be part one, right, where we're going to go ahead and create this task and say, you know, we're going to send out the proposal. But we might also want to queue up a follow up for ourselves to make sure that if they don't get back to us, we have another thing that gets on our radar. So we can go ahead and actually add a scheduled action, which says, you know, three days after this rule is originally triggered, we'll go ahead and create a new task to follow up on the proposal, right? So we don't have to you know, remember to come back into this deal later, we'll just tell the system, hey, shoot me a reminder in three days if they haven't answered. Um, and one last thing to highlight before we jump off of this with these scheduled actions is that if between the original update of the stage and three days later, the stage were to move again, so maybe you move the stage to, you know, close one because they signed it, this scheduled action is going to cancel. It's not going to happen anymore. So because you've told the system, hey, we're no longer waiting for the proposal, it's not going to remind you to follow up on that proposal anymore. Right? So that's important to know because sometimes that's great. Like in this case, that's exactly what we want. But in other cases, you might not want to cancel that task. So you might need to create two different workflows or you know, come up with a different solution to make sure that the right logic is in place. Because there is a lot of that where sometimes you just got to trial and error you know, it might not be 100% clear at first exactly what some of the workflows you built are going to do, you know, especially if you're just getting started with this. So, you know, the best way to do it is to start building them and then try out, you know, a demo deal and, and see if everything looks right. And if it doesn't, you know, you kind of go back to the drawing board and, uh, and try again. Yeah, and before we move on from this, um, it's also important to note that you can have many, many, many conditions. So you'll see under condition one here, you've got add another condition. I think, what are we limited to, 50 per module on workflows now, Tyler? Is that correct? Uh, yeah, That's about 50. 50. Is, it, is it 50? Um, but so oftentimes we'll, we'll look and people have done these workflows and they just have one workflow in or you know one condition set per every single workflow. And you actually can. So this is when a deal is created or edited. So maybe you've got like 20 things or, you know, you can only, you can stack 10 in each one of these. So you can have up to 10 conditions. So you can say when a deal is created or edited, add another condition, say in the stage is X and then kind of set that and you can kind of come down. So you can have one of these workflow rules, which is maybe it's all around, you know, deal pipeline and all of the things that happen in that deal pipeline. And you can kind of go through and do those as well. And then when you are all done, you will see your workflow at the bottom.